All right, so we've defined the trig functions. We have looked at some basic identities. And now we're going to come back to our golden angles. So our golden angles were our axis angles, 0, 90, 180, 270. And then there was three angles in quadrant 1, 45, 30, and 60, or 30, 45, 60. So in this video, we're going to learn about the trig functions for specifically 30, 45, and 60. So by the end of this video, you will be able to know what the six ratios are for those three angles. And I'm going to show you visually how we do that. So I have the 45, 45, 90 first. So what we do is we create a right triangle. And specifically in this one, right, this is my 90 degrees. And if this is 45 degrees, this has to be 45 degrees because the angle of a triangle add up to 180. So this is why it's called a 45, 45, 90 triangle. This is called an isosceles triangle. It's when two angles are the same. So the sides that are across from it are also the same. And so you're going to be able to make them whatever you want, whatever, however big you want. But I'm going to choose one and one. Because remember, and this is the key, no matter how large you make your triangle, if the angle stays the same, the ratios will be the same. So you could pick two and two, three and three, 10 and 10. What will change is that the bigger, the leg, the bigger you make the legs, the bigger your hypotenuse will be. So I'm going to find my hypotenuse. 1 squared plus 1 squared is equal to c squared. 1 plus 1 is 2, which means that c will be the square root of 2. So here's my construction. So I'm going to use, I'm going to look at this 45 degrees here because they're the same. So I'm just going to pick the bottom one. So then I'm going to use Sokatoa. So the sign is opposite over. So this is going to be my opposite. This is going to be my adjacent. And this is going to be my hypotenuse. So my sign is going to be 1 over the square root of 2 or rationalize radical 2 over 2. Cosine will also be 1 over the square root of 2 which will give me radical 2 over 2. Tangent is going to be 1 over 1, which is just going to give me 1. And then you can just use the reciprocal. So as long as you know sine, cosine, and tangent, you just think about flipping them. So the reciprocal of 1 is 1, because cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so that's going to be square root of 2 over 1, but you don't need to write the denominator of 1. And secant will be the reciprocal of cosine, and radical 2 over 1 is, again, radical 2. So pretty straightforward. So the sine of 45 degrees is radical 2 over 2. The cosine of 45 degrees is radical 2 over 2. Because remember, what you're doing is you're plugging in an angle. You're outputting a ratio. That's how trig functions work. Okay, let's take care of 30 and 60. Now, 30 and 60 go together because, again, the triangle has to add up to 180. So if you have a right angle and one of the angles is 60, the other has to be 30. So the way that we construct this is that we actually create an equilateral triangle. That worked out. looks pretty good. Okay, so in an equilateral triangle, all the angles are the same. And for all the angles to be the same, it has to be 60 degrees. And I'm actually going to put this one outside. And then if the angles are the same, the sides have to be the same. And again, you could use whatever sides you want. You can make them as big or as small as you want. But I'm going to use two for a reason that I want to use an even number for what I'm about to do next. So the next part of what you're going to do is you're actually going to cut this triangle in half from the top. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to cut this in half. Maybe. And I'm going to make this oh, a little bit bigger. Let's put it here. Okay. Now, when I cut this in half, it's going to make a right angle with the bottom. Perfect. So when I cut it in half, the bottom is going to become one and one because I cut it perfectly in half. And the angle here is going to be cut in half, so it's going to become 30 degrees. And here's the triangle that I'm going to look at. So this is this little guy. I'm going to do it in yellow. 
I'm going to look at this part of the triangle here, this half. So let's draw it out because that's the right angle. So here's my 90 degrees. Here's my 60. Here's my 30. Here's 1. Here's 2. And then by the Pythagorean theorem, I have 1 squared plus b squared is equal to 2 squared. So 1 plus b squared is equal to 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. So b will be the square root of 3. So I'm going to begin by doing 30 degrees. So we're going to look at this little guy right here. So for 30 degrees, 1 is the opposite, square root of 3 is the adjacent, and 2 is the hypotenuse. So then you, we do Sokotoa. So the sine of theta, or sine of 30 degrees, will be 1 half. The cosine of 30 degrees will be radical 3 over 2. The tangent of 30 degrees will be 1 over the square root of 3, or rationalize, you might see it as radical 3 over 3. And then we do the reciprocal. So cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, so that will give us square root of 3. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so that will give us 2. And secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so that will give us 2 over the square root of 3. But rationalized, you might see it as 2 square root of 3 over 3. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the exact same triangle, 60, 30, 1, square root of 3, 2. But now I'm going to look at 60 degrees. So 2 will still be the hypotenuse, but now 1 will be the adjacent and square root of 3 will be the opposite. So the sine of 60 degrees will be radical 3 over 2. The cosine of 60 will be 1 half. The tangent of 60 degrees will be square root of 3 over 1. And now we take the reciprocal. So cotangent will be 1 over square root of 3. Rationalize radical 3 over 3. Cosecant will be the reciprocal of sine. So 2 over the square root of 3. Or rationalize 2 square root of 3 over 3. And last but not least, secant will be the reciprocal of cosine, which will be 2. Now I make a little note there for you, which is again, and, and I was doing this when I was doing the table, you really need to just remember sine, cosine, and tangent because the rest will fall over from the reciprocal identity. But one of the things that I really, really advise for you to do is to draw the visuals. Like these little triangles that I'm drawing, you need to be graphing them, especially at the beginning. Use the visual to help you. It's very key. Like visuals are key in trigonometry because it's geometry. Okay, so let's take a look here. Now, remember that we, I wrote the radians next to it. Okay, so 30 degrees is pi over 6. 60 degrees is pi over 3. Hopefully you worked on that since last, from the last set of videos. And 45 degrees is pi over 4. So if I want to find the exact value, similar to the type instructions or the exact same instructions as we had in the last problem of the last video, but now, these are angles that we know, 30 degrees, pi over 3, and pi over 4. So what you can do at first, if you're really not feeling comfortable with your radians, is to change everything to degrees. So 30, 60, and 45 are golden angles. So we want to evaluate all of these. So what we would do without even looking up above is we're going to draw triangles to help us. So we're going to draw triangles because we're going to keep drawing them. So this is 60, this is 30, this is 1, this is 2, because I cut it in half. I cut the equilateral triangle in half. This is square root of 3. So for the cosine of 30, if I look at 30 degrees, the cosine is going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse, so that's going to be radical 3 over 2, minus. Okay, next we're going to do 60 degrees. So that's going to be this one. So it's going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse. So that's going to be radical 3 over 2. Then for the next one, I need the other triangle. I need the 45 degree one. So here's 45 degrees. Here's 45 degrees. Here's 1, 1. And by the Pythagorean, this was the square root of 2. So if I look at tangent, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So that's 1 over 1. So these cancel each other out, so I get 0 minus 1, which is negative 1. 
And this is how you, so this is the difference between using the identities to cancel out or actually knowing the ratios. So here, because you know the ratios of 30, 60, 45 without a calculator, then you can just actually plug in the ratios and just work with the numbers themselves instead of working with the trig functions.